You've probably heard a lot about your inner critic, but did you know it's connected to unprocessed trauma? So let's talk about the impact that trauma has on your inner critic and I'll give you three tips to try and banish your inner critic for good. So first, let's acknowledge the fact that your inner critic is simply a manifestation of all your unprocessed trauma, all bundled up into a messy sticky ball. And though it will use your voice often when it speaks, your inner critic is not you because this multi-layered messy ball can contain anything from bullies and abusers and loved ones who made mistakes or said the wrong thing, all the way through to institutions like schools, colleges and universities, and sociological constructs like transphobia, racism or the patriarchy. So my first tip for minimising your inner critic is to name it. When we assume that our inner critic is just us being very mean to ourselves, it's a pretty tricky one to tackle. But by naming the inner critic, you begin to unveil it and it will lose some of its power. Unless you're in therapy or working with somebody in psychology like myself, I would highly recommend that you name your inner critic after a character rather than somebody in real life, because this can be pretty triggering. And I have some fantastic examples from my own patients and clients of what they have named them. Professor Snape, Mother Gothel, Ursula the Sea Witch from The Little Mermaid. And I have had Regina George and even Donald Trump. You'll find that some inner critics are quite demanding, whereas others might be quite punitive and some have a mixture of both. But by simply naming our inner critic, we can begin the second phase of this process, which is shaming it. By the way, if you're enjoying this video, please go and hit the like button. It would absolutely make my day and it really does help others know I exist. Sometimes it can be really tricky to differentiate our own thoughts from the voice of the inner critic. So my second tip in this process is asking yourself, would I say this to a loved one? You tend to find that if the script running through your head is not what you would say to a loved one, it's much more likely to be your inner critic. You'll also find that the inner critic will use phrases and language that doesn't actually belong to you. So once we recognise it's our inner critic, it's time to be firm with it. And a really helpful way to do this is not to imagine that you're being attacked by your inner critic, but your childhood self or teenage self is being attacked by the inner critic. We want to stand up for them and use very firm, confident language like, we don't speak to children like that. Or, we would never expect that of a teenager, that expectation is much too high. Even, they're doing their best right now and I am very proud of them. A very firm hand is needed with your inner critic and this practice does take time and it does feel strange at first. But what about stopping the inner critic in its tracks completely? So my final tip actually comes from the book Chatter by Ethan Cross. It's a great read and I'll link it below. When we consistently talk to ourselves in the first person, it's quite easy for the inner critic to swoop in and interject in that conversation. For example, we might go from saying, wow, I really messed up that exam today. And the inner critic will jump in with, I'm such an idiot. I'm definitely going to fail. There's no way I'm going to progress to the next level. Ugh, I suck at everything. In Cross's book, he discusses a study that looks at talking to ourselves in the third person. In the study, there were two groups involved. One group were talking to themselves in the first person, as normal, and the second group were talking to themselves in the third person. Interestingly, by the end of the study, the group talking to themselves in the third person had markedly better mental health outcomes. Because in essence, they were able to show themselves more empathy by talking to themselves in the third person. And I suspect this is because by talking to ourselves in the third person, we're able to show ourselves much more empathy, the empathy we would actually show a loved one. And often it can be hard ordinarily to show ourselves that empathy. And I also suspect that this group talking to themselves in the third person were able to stop the inner critic in its tracks. It had no real way to interject or jump in. It couldn't sabotage the self-talk. For example, Ruth really struggled in that exam today. It was a tough one. But she studied hard and she gave it her all, so for that I'm really proud of her. I truly hope these three tips were helpful. And see how you get on by naming your inner critic, shaming your inner critic, and trying to remove it entirely by changing your self-talk to the third person. Remember, everyone has an inner critic and while we can get rid of it entirely, we can minimise it so it's not intrusive in our days. I really hope you've enjoyed this video and thank you so much for sticking with me until the end. I'll see you very soon, my love.